Hi all. Um, so my name is Dimitri De Jonge. Um, I'm from this uh, Berlin-based company called Ascribe.io. And to give you some uh, background, we uh, were focusing mainly on uh, creators, author authorship. Um, I, I think uh, Evan already gave a nice demo on how creators would love to be attributed on every single download click, all these things, and not always have to pass by managers, uh, different contracts and all this stuff. And we came to a point where we saw that uh, we were using the Bitcoin blockchain, which is awesome technology, has nice, nice, nice features. But at some point we realized that throughputs and uh, storage and just queryability of these uh, uh, blockchain, uh, Bitcoin type blockchains are sometimes quite tedious. So we came up with uh, a new product, it's called BigchainDB. I'll talk, talk a little bit later on this uh, uh, in a few slides. But the main topic here is, um, like, I took a few days just to see how quick and easy it is to implement the Interledger and see what problems I came across in order to get that protocol incorporated in this BigchainDB environment. Uh, what I also did was, uh, for the mega beta version I got right now, it's called version 0.1, but it could be version 0.000.1. But it's open source, you can download it, play with it, and maybe contribute. Um, so basically what we see, uh, how the interledger is in, uh, protocol is important to us, is mainly because people not only want to uh, trade money, but they want to trade assets, maybe Internet of Things kind of types when you collect energy and want to sell some on the web, maybe you're an artist, you want to get royalties. Um, all these things can nicely be combined through this interledger protocol. Now, a quick recap on, yeah, we already saw this today. So basically the interledger relies on a few components. The main one is probably the ledger provided escrow. And then you have these connectors which have accounts on both ledgers. They, they, they should, once they receive payment, there should be some kind of signed receipt ripplement across these payments. And we targeted the universal mode because we thought it's maybe a bit safer not to rely on external notaries and it looked a little bit more simple. Now, the ledger technology we are using here is our own Bitchain DB. And what I did was the first thing I thought, well, I had to get that escrow in. So I used Multisig. Uh, so meaning that in order to release an asset or any kind of money, you have multiple parties signing and agreeing on, uh, well, this condition is fulfilled, so we'll all put our signature underneath this um, transfer and then the funds get released. Um, also, we have these connectors. Uh, typically, it's an external party, a third party. Uh, it's not built in, in the ledger, but it's an account that has uh, it's placed on many ledgers. So at that point, they will provide part of the cross-ledger communication because once they know some escrow has been released on an account KO, then they also want to pass on that message to other ledgers where they need to um, refund their money. So that comes down to have this signed receipt and probably some ledger that can listen to these signed receipts and fulfill the condition in escrow. Um, now, just a little bit more about this big chain. Uh, we, we figured we have some really cool uh, pro properties for, from the Bitcoin network work, mainly it's immutability. The fact that you, you don't really have central authority, it's fully decentralized and um, you could put assets over the network, all of that. And then you have these big data databases which have been out there for more than 20 years. And they've proven high throughput, low latency capacity, maybe some permissioning, but mainly also querying. And our goal with our projects uh, is to combine all of these nice features into one single thing. So basically, if you look at uh, the development stack, you would have maybe some, some uh, distributed apps running, uh, for example, could be in uh, areas in Ethereum, all these things. And underneath, at the bottom layer, in a truly decentralized system, you might have a file system called IPFS. 
but there wasn't really a place for a database yet because the Bitcoin blockchain is limited in some points and it doesn't really allow you to create an ORM and stuff like that on top. So that's where we try to come in. Um, of course, you can replace many of those decentralized solutions by Amazon things. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick uh, recap. I also have a little demo, not so fancy as as the as you guys demos, but it should uh, show. I have somewhere. No, let me. So what I did was basically I created two instances, two, two databases, uh, two, two ledgers basically. Uh, one is called Big Chain, the other I, I called Mega Chain just to give it a name. Um, now, so I basically I have to start this. So I'm launching the two ledgers, which are hosted locally, but they're separate. And I have this little Python code here. This is basically all, all I needed to get the basics of the protocol running, is having accounts, a user, an escrow, which is kind of an, a user with some where you can add just a condition function, and you can validate that condition. And I have a ledger connection, which basically has a few accounts and is able to communicate with the escrow. So, uh, once I run this, well, the, the test itself I'm running here is I got Alice, which is on big chain. I got Bob, who's on mega chain. I have this connector who has uh, both an account on big chain and mega chain. I create a few assets and then I transfer something from Alice to Bob by going through the connector. And so let me quick run this. I added a little bit of throttling because uh, transactions are validated in blocks. And in order not to have a double spend, you need to have your block confirmed first. And that takes like uh, five seconds for us. So on the left side here, you'll see this is the big chain. This is the mega chain. Uh, if I go to the bottom, you have this Genesis block, which says, Hello world. Then I'm creating a few assets, which is all included here. And then what's the interesting stuff is the escrow part. So basically, I'm, this key is the owner, and it puts it into escrow with this new owner. And uh, so basically, how it looks like internally is you go from one account and you put your asset together with an escrow service. And in order to release those funds, you not only you have to sign it, but also the escrow service has to sign it. And the escrow service will only sign it if the condition has been fulfilled. So now on the other side, we have kind of the same thing. There is also an escrow service, also a condition fulfilled. And once this communication has been done, you'll see these two signatures are generated and a transaction from two users to the account ledger has been fulfilled to the to the connector and here at the other side you see that it's kind of cryptic because we're using hashes here but again we have two signatures and in the end uh, this guy is Bob and he receives he has received the payment and the ripple has been done so I guess yeah kind of the basic setup if, if you do feel interested in engaging um, I made this little um, big chain DB interledger for. Um, there's still a lot of work for me to do, but I've, I, yeah, I have upcoming weeks just to make this more uh, solid. And yeah, everybody's, everybody willing can just pull it, play around, shouldn't be too difficult.